Hey. <laughs> Culture is beautiful aesthetic because it's recreating natural ecosystems. So there's lots of places for wildlife, lots of places for food, lots of places for people to be. So it's a much more creative, organic space to be in. But a traditional landscape is just um, designed once and um, implemented once and then maintained over the years. But it's not a changing, evolving thing. And a permaculture design really looks towards a natural forest ecosystem or some kind of uh, local um, ecosystem and tries to model itself on that. So you'll see on the acre hillside that the Merritt students and I have done over the last 10 years is that we use a lot of tree stumps and whatnot. So they're something that was going into the waste stream and we're able to divert it and use it for stairs and terraces and seating and all kinds of things and it's just eventually going to rot out and turn into more soil so that's really what we're doing we're doing a lot of soil building in permaculture as much as we can because soil is the foundation of healthy plants and the more organic matter we have in the soil the less water we need and just the less imports we need a food forest like this looks a lot different than a traditional garden because we're, we're really looking at the um, imports and the exports of a, of a garden. We're really trying to think of it as an ecosystem and because um, we're trying to model it on a natural ecosystem there's not a crew of mow-blown go folks that clean up all the leaves, all the organic matter and get rid of it and then drive somewhere with more petroleum um, to a place that's manufactured compost far away um, and bring back that same organic matter. taking the permaculture class to further myself and my education as a garden manager. Um, I oversee five different sites in West Oakland um, that are gardens connected with schools for kids to learn about eating healthy and empowering themselves to grow their own vegetables. Um, so I'm learning different techniques and methods in order to have a sustainable gardens and bring that knowledge base to young kids in, our, in, our, in my neighborhood in West Oakland. I'm in permaculture because I want to see how systems work together and bring that into the landscape in people's gardens, you know, just creating dynamic systems with lots of diversity where all the plants are working together and, you know, finding out how to do that. The food forest generally is composed of seven or eight layers, so we're trying to mimic it on a natural forest ecosystem. And so to start with, um, we're going to look at the tall canopy layer. So on our garden here, we planted a number of chestnuts on the very top of the garden because it's going to be the thing that gets the largest. And then the next thing down, the small tree layer, so that's where most of our fruit trees come in and there's over 200 fruit trees here on, on our acre hillside. Plums and apples and um, mulberries and um, peaches. It, I could go on for a long time. Then there's a, a shrub layer. One of the shrubs that we've planted up here a little bit are um, Ceanothus, our native, that's a nitrogen fixer. So um, something that pulls atmospheric nitrogen and is very pretty and um, brings in beneficial insects. Then there's the herb layer. So herb is in the sense of just any herbaceous plant material. So it's not just culinary herbs. Well, we do have a herb spiral and we have culinary herbs growing throughout the garden. This is just vegetables. Anything that um, grows up and during the winter dies back um, is usually considered um, something that's herbaceous. You know, it's all the vegetables. The students get tomatoes to take home, that kind of thing. So that's, you know, a tomato as an herb would be um, another layer. The next one would be a ground cover layer. And so we've got um, strawberries and we've got um, peppermint and spearmint and things like that. Just good ground covers that hold the soil. And then there's the root layer. So we've got, um, like I mentioned, horseradish or comfrey things with deep tap roots, um, you know, carrots and burdock, um, parsnips, things like that, that just go uh, deep and pull up nutrients. Um, so that's the root layer we want to think about in a food forest. 
and then there's a vine layer and so we've got um, grapes, blackberries and kiwis. Most permaculture books will talk about a seven layer of a food forest but um, just because of the influence of um, Ken Litchfield and some of my students who are really passionate about mushrooms, um, there really is a whole eighth layer of the food forest is, is the mushroom layer. And so that's really valuable because when a food forest is planted eventually it'll get a lot shadier. Um, and um, so what can you grow in the shade? So um, and having all this organic matter that we've put around the straw, the wood chips, um, the logs, uh, the mushrooms are able to digest those and produce something that we can eat. One day I'd really like to um, have my own farm and grow my own fruits and vegetables and not rely on the stores to feed me poison. <laughs> I meet a lot of great people also doing it. Yeah, it's nice meeting like-minded people. And then you just meet like networking, meet a lot of good connections with people doing some really great projects. It's good. <laughs> and soon these trees are going to be producing a lot of fruit, so we'll be able to eat the fruit off these trees and not have to yeah. buy the fruit. And yeah. we eat a lot of the greens, a lot of the annuals right now. Yeah, I feel like the school, like the horticulture program is like really giving, like you can um, harvest whatever and we're very like into it. Yeah, it's a great program. There should be more in other colleges and community colleges, more landscape horticulture and people yeah. growing food like this. Yeah. Basic ethics of permaculture, we have um, fair share, so there's an um, even sharing of the resources, um, so we don't get in this problem where we're at right now with the 1% and the 99% um, would be one way to think about it. We're trying to come up with a guild. A plant guild is usually a group of plants that you plant together, you make a design, so every plant benefits each other. So usually in a guild of plants you will have, in permaculture, uh, you have a tall tree and some shrubs and smaller herbaceous plants that will help each other. Some of them will have the job of uh, gathering nutritious nutrients from the soil, others will attract insects for pollination. Every plant will benefit each other within the guild to create a harmonious place for them to live. This is a willow tree, so it is probably planted here because there's water here. And I'm assuming if there's water here, it's probably a good place to start a tomato plant. So right now there's a lot of water coming out of the hill. It's very clay soil here, so I have this pocket where water can collect um, for the tomato. And once the tomato gets bigger later on in the year, the water's going to kind of dry up, but that's really good for our tomatoes, and it's something people call dry farming. Um, it'll allow the fruit to be more sweet and um, I don't know, more tasty, if you will, uh, because you're not allowing too much water, so you get more sugar content in your, in your fruits at the end of the year. The important thing about gardening in a community is that it makes a new platform for people to get to communicate on rather than, oh, you're female or you're white or you're black or you're gay or you're straight. It's more like, hey, here's gardening. I don't care what you look like, where you come from. We like to garden. I like to garden. Let's garden.